Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Pocket Change Market Report time, this time for November 3rd, 2021. I want to thank each and every single one of you for joining in on the midweek edition of this report where we take a look at some of the most interesting and relevant errors and varieties to have sold on eBay in the last two days. Now, as you guys are aware, these are coins that customarily you could find going through change or maybe searching through some bank rolls. Uh, those are some of the more common methods of finding a lot of these. Uh, in addition, being able to cherry pick some of these varieties and errors at a local coin shop or a show is just as important. Keep in mind, there are a lot of big time dealers out there that just really don't care about a lot of these smaller time in their words, uh, errors and varieties. And this is where you could kind of swoop in, take advantage of it buy these up at a really, really affordable cost, and then add them to your collection or sell them for a pretty good profit. Uh, they, there's really no wrong way of doing it. As long as you do it, those two different methods, they have been the tried and true ways of kind of supplementing, you know, your income if you need it. Uh, otherwise, it's just a really great way to uh, build a collection from scratch. So... A few things to keep in mind. Uh, these coins are all raw. I'm not an advocate for grading any of these coins. Keep in mind, if an error or variety is worth 10, 20 bucks, uh, you know, what's the use of spending $100 to send it to a PCGS and only have it come back and still it being worth 20 bucks, right? Uh, so don't grade any of these coins if you're going to resell it. You know, if you could take really good pictures. That's going to speak volumes uh, to what you have and, you know, people will know what, what they're looking at. Uh, and then those folks, the ones that do buy them, oftentimes won't grade them either. Uh, they'll just add it to their collection. A lot of people like to collect specific errors by date, same with varieties. Um, so there's a lot, lot to love uh, with, with uh, you know, searching your change or cherry picking at a show or a shop. Uh, but anyways... If this is your first time here, I want to thank you guys for joining in on this Pocket Change Market Report. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, feel free to share the video and, of course, subscribe. If you enjoyed today's content, hit the dislike button if you don't. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. We got 25 coins to talk about. And here's one that you don't, don't really find that often. It's a 2000D Lincoln Memorial Cent. Yes, it's got a couple uh, curved clips on there. And, uh, you know, when it gets to this age of Lincoln, uh, you don't see this particular error that often. Usually you'll have to go back into the early 90s and into the 80s of coins where you will find a lot more rim clips. Now, what makes this even more extra special is it has two. It has two curved clips on there, which uh, adds a little bit more of appeal, adds more value. And because of that, this coin sold for $15.54. Not too shabby for a Denver minted coin. Um, you know, typically you don't see errors like this on Denver minted coins because that particular facility is well known for its quality control. So this is a really nice find. Congrats to the seller and the finder. Uh, it, it's really nice piece. And the return is pretty sweet as well. All right, we have a few pieces of currency on the list. Uh, this is our first one. Uh, it's a 1977A Series $1 Federal Reserve Note. Uh, call it for what it is. It's a dollar bill. But, um, you know, it's in pretty decent shape. You do have kind of a raggedy top margin. As you can see, there's a few splits there. But all in all, you don't really see a whole lot here on the front. It's only when you flip the note over, you have this tremendous, uh, what they call solvent smear or an ink smear. Uh, they, they're, they're both the same thing. Uh, so it really depends on who you talk to. Uh, they're either going to say one of those two types of error uh, terminologies. Uh, this one right here. Of course, anytime you encounter a solvent smear, you are going to have the same color ink smeared on that side as what's being used to print the design devices. So keep that in mind when you are uh, finding some of these. You might find some that you know are different color uh, inks on there. Uh, usually, those are red flags. All right, you want green to be on green and black to be on black. 
Oh, and by the way, that note sold for $89.99. All right, time to uh, check in on the uh, the Crown die chip on the 2021P. Washington crossing the Delaware. One-year shot quarters. All right, keep in mind, they're only doing this design just this year. We're pretty much coming to a close here in 2022. But if you have the ability... And I'm sure a lot of you on the East Coast have that capability of finding rolls of this coin. I would highly encourage you to do so. Seeing as how Christmas is around the corner, people are looking for ways to make some extra cash. This is a good coin to kind of help you in that cause. Uh, as you can see, on top of George Washington's hat, we have this tremendous die chip. This is the most latest stage of this form of die chips. There are smaller die chips that you can find on this particular coin. Save those as well. They're worth a few bucks. But this is the big one right here. And uh, this is one that has stood the test of time for pretty much the entire summer into the fall season. Um, I remember when these things came out. I thought it was silly when they were selling for 50, 60 bucks. I'm like, there's no way that's sustainable. And then here we are in November and these things are still going strong. This particular example sold for $188.50. And by the way, that's 33 bits. Lots of activity. Lots of people very interested in this coin. We've probably seen, I would say, maybe five or six examples sell in just the last 48 hours and the money is it just can't be denied it's real money i mean if you can make 150 to 200 bucks off this coin and you find three or four of them before christmas i mean that's really big potential there ladies ladies and gentlemen take advantage of it while it's out there all right for the next coin here we have a candy half dollar uh you can barely see the date but it does say in 1995 uh, I guess this is a Philadelphia as well. You can see just barely a remnant of the P mint mark there. But this coin looks pretty, we uh, you know, weakly struck, and it sure is. Uh, what we have here is a coin that's been struck through Greece. So, you know, like I've said before, yeah, yeah uh, mint employees will apply grease to the, you know, various components of these minting presses just to make sure they're running really well uh, you know it's like changing the oil on a car okay there's a lot of wear tear wear and tear in, involved with uh what's going on here so obviously you want to lubricate the chassis or lubricate just the overall parts and that includes the dies so the dies had a little bit of grease on there uh when a coin is struck it's going to look like this. Uh, a lot of weakened devices because it has to push through just a skim of grease and it won't uh, it, it won't upset all of the details onto the coin. It looks like there is quite a bit of grease on not only the hammer die but the anvil die as well. As you can see, this is a double-sided greaser. Pretty nice. Uh, this particular coin sold for $12.50 and that's with five bits. Here's another piece of currency, this time a little bit older $5 bill. Uh, this is what they call the small head type. Uh, you know, it didn't seem like that long ago that the uh, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing decided to do a uh, complete overhaul of its currency. And it's a good thing too. People are really embracing the new colorized notes. But what we have here is uh, not the actual penned in writing on the face of the note where it says 201. That's actually a bad thing. Uh, usually uh, it, that would uh, equate to a details grade similar to coins. Uh, nothing really of note here on the front of this $5 bill. But when you flip it over, man, look at this thing. Um, the seller thought that it was an insufficient inking error, uh, but because of how how uh, sharp the um, uh, and abrupt that cutoff is between the actual printing and what's missing and keep in mind you know under insufficient inking kind of rules you're supposed to see little bits of of inking all throughout the note but this is undeniably a cutoff uh, nearly halfway through this third printing or second printing rather 
What this is referred to, and this is probably the first time you guys have heard this on my channel, this is actually a board break error. And what that is, is when there's a faulty or partially broken impression cylinder, an impression cylinder pulls the currency paper into the intaglio portion of the printing plate. I know that seems like a lot of stuff being thrown at you, but... Um, this is something that happens very infrequently. Uh, this is actually a very rare error. Um, and most of the time, these are the type of notes that gets pulled out of quality control and a star note inserted. So the fact that this one even survived, let alone circulated for a while, is just really crazy. Now, this particular note right here, a best offer was accepted. The original asking price was $299.99. I would have to guess that this probably sold for between $200 and $250. I tried putting the data in TerraPeak. It didn't come up with anything. So maybe one of you uh, can go on, on 130 point or some of those other sites worth point and uh, see how much this sold for. But this is a very unique offering that I'm glad to see not graded that just sold for what it is. Uh, outstanding note. All right, so this one will fool most folks uh, because because of how crowded the reverse design is on the pre-1999 quarters, this one can easily be lost. It's a 1996 P. Washington quarter, but it has a little bit of a strike through on the reverse right there. So something had fallen onto that planchet before the strike and then had fallen off of the coin after the strike. Um, it's a pretty cool strike through. It could be anything from a, a piece of wood to uh, a detached lamination to you know some sort of uh, metal shavings coming off of the um, the, the minting press it, you know it could be anything uh, but what I do know is this is an extremely nice very desired coin and this one right here is sold for thirteen dollars and twenty five cents here's another Washington quarter this time a 1966 and what we have here is uh, actually a slightly off center struck coin. Uh, a little bit tougher date, uh, you know, you don't see 66s and 67s that often, uh, so it was nice to see something like this. Uh, this one was actually photographed in a hard plastic holder. You want to make sure you take the coins out of those when you do photograph coins like this, so that way you don't get, you know, areas of glare like you see here and on the front of the coin as well. Uh, but this one is off center by about maybe 15%, give or take. And this one sold for $35.38, and that's with 24 total bids. Here's another one that you could cherry pick out of your scrap silver. Believe it or not, these things are being overlooked every single chance um, by dealers, by collectors, you name it. And uh, it only really takes an astute collector that knows their Washington Quarter double dies to really buckle down and look at these things. It's a 1934 Philadelphia Washington Quarter. It's quite common. Now in this particular grade, it's really common. These things circulated quite a bit. But when you get in close to the motto, in God we trust, no doubt about it, is doubled. You can see just the overall notching and it's a very strong double die. It's one of the most major types for the Washington Quarter series. And even in this condition, this is a note that sold for, or this is a uh, quarter that sold for $29.98. Keep in mind, you know, Mel values, what, $6? So you could just as easily keep this in your scrap uh, silver bin or your hoard or whatever it is. But wouldn't you just rather have the 30 bucks and then go and buy more silver? You know, I think that's the ticket right there. Here's a 1923 Lincoln. This is our feature coin of the week, and it does indeed have a uh, uh, a fallen off lamination piece. It's a right good size piece as well. So that puppy detached had fallen off at some point. You still have um, a half half a part of the loose lamination still on there. So half of the actual clamshell or whatever it is had fallen off, but. Wow, that's a pretty incredible coin right there. And again, I've probably overlooked coins like this many years ago, uh, but I've gained a new appreciation for them. You know, it used to be that laminations, you know, is in a roundabout way 
weren't really worth pulling out. You know, they were a dime a dozen. But, you know, in today's collecting landscape, people collect these by date. So this is a little bit tougher date. Although when you get into the 20s, you expect this kind of quality from Lincoln Sense. This one right here sold for $39.80, and that's with 25 bits. In the perfect world, I can imagine someone cherry-picking this out of a bag of wheat scents. It's that easy. I found a few from the 20s, and, you know, it's a nice little windfall. You know, on average, you spend about $0.05 cents per wheat scent in these bulk bags. So that's a heck of a return right there. Make sure you're looking for these. Here's a 1998 Lincoln Memorial set. This one is broad struck. You can just tell just how wide the uh, the rims are compared to the internal devices. Uh, so a broad strike occurs when a coin is being struck without the collar present to keep the coin in during the strike. All right, so that metal flow has to go somewhere. This is a really decent looking example. Uh, looks like there is a little bit of fingerprint action on the reverse where, you know, some people don't care about it, but, you know, um, as a you know type of eye appeal thing, people want a clean coin like this. It's a 98. It's one of the co more common dates to find errors of this type. This one sold for nine dollars and twenty five cents. Here's another favorite, you guys. If you're not checking, 1972 Philadelphia uh, struck Lincoln Memorials for any sort of double die, you are certainly missing out because these coins are the hot ticket right now. This is a 1972. Uh, this is indeed a doubled die obverse, and it's FS108, if I'm not mistaken, and it is. Uh, there are nine major types, uh, FS numbers, so there's 101 all the way up to 109, and uh, they're all quite nice. And people, believe it or not, collect these by... Um, double die offers designation so they won all nine the toughest of course is number four that's the one that's worth like one to two thousand dollars if you're able to find that but this one's no slouch either condition's really nice uh you could you know, just see the doubling in the date it's pretty nice but you know the doubling is way better on liberty and in the motto in god we trust in this condition i would say it's a really nice choice bu type of grade it sold for $119.45 all right I mean this one needs no explanation it's a broken die issue here this is what they call a cud it's a die break right on the obverse of the coin it's a 70 AD Lincoln Memorial so you can see the the cud covering the word we and partially trust on there so that piece of die had fallen off when it strikes a coin, that's what it looks like. Uh, just a big old gob. Uh, but you also do have some weakness on the reverse as well, which is normally what you want to check on these. This one sold for $49.60. All right, here's a 1987 Lincoln Memorial Send. This time it's an off-center struck coin. This one's off-center by about 20%. It's... It's not what I would consider to be a really tough date, but it is a little bit more uncommon than some of the other ones from the 90s. Um, it's in pretty nice shape. You know, they, there's a few carbon spots on the reverse of the coin, um, and this one sold for $10.80. All right, this is a good one. Uh, surprisingly, this seller kind of um, uh, tempered their desire to crack this thing open for one coin only and send it off to the graders. I think they did the right choice. Selling it raw, you're still able to get as much money as if it was graded. This is a 1983S proof set. Contains five coins from pennies to candy half dollar. Uh, but there's the big reason why that you would look through something like this. And that's going to be the Roosevelt dime that's missing the S mint mark. Okay, it's in the cherry picker's guide. It's in the red book. This is a huge missing mint mark coin. All right, there's a few dates that are notorious for it. 68S, no S dime. 1990S, Lincoln and Jefferson nickel. There's a few of them. Uh, but this one right here is a nice one as well. So this seller sold the entire set, but highlighted the Roosevelt dime missing mint mark coin as being the main reason why you want to buy this. 
Uh, a best offer was accepted. The original asking price was $775. I'm thinking somewhere in that 600 to 650 range is where I've seen these particular sets sell for in the last 12 months. So uh, again, it's not coming up on Terra Peak on eBay. So maybe you guys can check it out. Maybe, you know, find out how much it is. You can post it in the comments section. Now, again, this is a coin that you don't really see out in circulation, but it's a Jefferson nickel that was struck on a copper planchet made and intended for a Lincoln cent. Pretty cool. I mean, um, you know, it certainly fits the size profile. You do have a lot of the devices cut in half around the edge. But, of course, that color is a dead giveaway, right? Um, you know, you put two and two together, and it's easy to see what we have here. The coin's in decent shape, albeit it does have a scratch on the reverse of the coin. And here's just a classic case of you don't need to grade it to know what it is. This one sold for $84.75 because of the scratch on the reverse. Even if you did grade it, you're not going to net much more money. Uh, you would just be better off saving your submission fee cost and just go ahead and just sell it like it is. So that's not bad. That's a nice coin. All right, this is a sneaky one right here. 2018 Lincoln Shield set. If you're not looking close enough, and if you guys are not using the magnifier, man, you guys, are, again, you're missing out. That's only one of the most important tools in any uh, treasure hunter's toolbox. If you don't have a loop or a magnifier, um, you're, you're not doing it right. Uh, and here's why. If you look up close in Liberty, yeah, there is a pretty substantial die crack that goes through most of the letters all the way up to the letter R in Liberty. I mean, this thing is quite strong. And, uh, you know, it's sold for $13.20. If you were going through rolls of these, like BU rolls, and you came across one, more than likely you're going to find a ton more because if they're being struck from the same set of dies, you know, obviously there's going to be a run of them and they'll you'll find them in a bank box, you know, pretty easily. I found that, I've determined that, from like double dies and other, you know, like spike heads and stuff like that. Uh, so why not this one? This is a really great find. And for $10 to $15 a pop, that's a really good way to make some extra money. Here's another piece of currency. Another $1 bill and a very, very modern one at that. It's a 2006. These are still out there. Uh, but the big, uh, big point of note of this particular note is going to be that third print shift. Uh, the serial numbers and the district seals are all canted lower on here. Uh, so the serial numbers are just about touching Washington, D.C., but you definitely see the seal dropped lower than where it should be. Um, this is a great one. Make sure you look out for these. Uh, they're, they're even being found on brand new notes of 2019. This one right here is sold for $35.54, and that's with 18 bids. And there's the back of the note, uh, nothing to uh, know here. Uh, you know, the, the this initial printing is uh, perfectly centered for the note. Here's a really cool 1999 P Jefferson nickel. This one's off center, but it might have been at one point also a die cap. All right, so probably stuck to that hammer die for a few strikes. Uh, I mean, the reverse strike is still quite strong on this, but... This is more so, you know, construed as an off-center strike. It's off-center by about 20%, somewhere around there. It's got a really nice deep dish appearance to it. This one is also in nice shape, too. Sold for $39.49. And this is a 1995 uh, Washington Quarter. Man, it's, it's some, some bangers coming through on eBay this uh, last few 24 or 48 hours. 95p Washington quarter and it's off center by about 40 percent I mean it's really nice you got a full date that's what collectors of this type of error want and the condition is quite nice and this one right here is sold for 43 dollars and that's with 13 bids ladies and gentlemen now why isn't this saying integrated holder now this is something that someone would buy and put integrated holder but you know again going back to their original, conversation of you don't need to grade things like this 
you know, this is this is this is right on the cusp. You know, I would have a hard decision on whether or not to send this to PCGS or just keep it the way it is. I there's just a whole lot of charm with keeping it the way it is. It's got some nice wood graining on there as well. Uh, Thirty six Buffalo. It's a very common date. Uh, you could find all sorts of great stuff on these, but this one's broad struck. Um, you know, and yeah, very seldom do you come across these, but when you do, man, they're quite stunning and buyers will say, will you know, agree with that sentiment as well. This one sold for $214 and 50 cents and that's with 26 bids. Here's another good one to look out for. I talk about this every single episode for probably the last three months. It's the Tuskegee Airmen 2021. These are Philadelphia's, ladies and gentlemen, with the burning building strike through. So that strike through is created by just a hardened piece of grease with some debris mixed in for extra measure. Uh, it's quite nice. And given kind of like the World War II throwback with the Tuskegee Airmen tribute for this coin, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. And that's really why it's promoted heavily and sold for such a good amount of money. This coin right here sold for $149.99. Still a lot of money. Between this and the Crown Die Chip, you should really be looking actively for both of them. Now, this might be the last piece of currency. I don't know. Actually, we got one more. Actually, the last one. Ooh, man. The last one of the day is just spectacular. But we have a 1981 $5 Federal Reserve note. This is a clean-looking note on the front. But when you flip this thing over, my goodness. Another solvent smear. Uh, this is legitimate. Uh, I've seen a few of these examples sell on heritage auctions in the last 15 years. And they always command a strong amount of money. This one right here is probably one of the most wildest solvent smears that you will come across. Again, you have the same colored inks um, matching up to the back of the note. That's important. You don't want to see black ink on the back. Uh, it just doesn't fit the profile of this particular error. This one right here sold for $255.50. Wow. All right, so this is a common coin to cherry pick. All right, some of these older mid 19th century coins, whether it's a three cent nickel or one of these flying eagles, they got all sorts of die breaks and cuds and all sorts of weird stuff going on with them. And they're quite common, but you know, if you can find them, they, they are attractive enough that they're going to be an easy sell. This is an 1858. This is also a small letters obverse. So United States of America is in the smaller font. There is a large letters type as well. But if you look on the reverse of the coin, yeah, it's quite rough. Um, but there is that pretty nice sizable cud at about the 6 to 7 o'clock position on the coin. And because of all that great stuff, it's sold for $35.99. And that's with three bids on this one. All right, I always tell you guys, look out for lots. Here's a lot of dimes, uh, and they all have clips. And they're all pretty significant-sized uh, curved clips at that. Um, very, very seldom do you see this many in one lot. And I always tell you guys, look out for the lots that you can buy cheap and then turn around and flip each piece individually and hopefully double your money. Now, you have some things to consider here. What do we have? We have a couple coins with doubled clips um, but the ones with singular clips the clips are so large that you know they could pretty much hold their own as a single uh, coin in a auction listing all by itself that's the cool part um, this lot right here sold for $51 and that's with 15 bids here's some reverse images for you I'd say it's a safe bet. You could pick these up, sell each dime individually for like $19.99 shipped. You spend like two bucks to ship the thing. Um, and you know, you could come away making about 30 to 40 bucks off the entire lot. So just a little idea, a little food for thought. You could do something like that. Make sure you kind of assess what the market is for your coins of these bigger lots before you go committing to a higher value on it sometimes it may not be worth it this one i would say you know still has some meat on the bones and the final listing that we're going to talk about on the pcmr this week 
is going to be this thing. It's a 1988 A $1 bill, Federal Reserve note action. Well, guess what? Is this a miscut or a misalignment? Hmm, well, I wonder what. Uh, actually, this one is a misaligned first print. All right, the first print on this note is going to be that black, deep intaglio design that says United States of America. It's got the, the little leaves and all sorts of other fine engraving on there. That's your first print. Um, the third print, which features the serial numbers and the district seals, are in the perfect position relative to the size of the paper. So... Um, something's definitely going on. It's not a miscut. Uh, you look out at the back of the note, it's perfectly centered so that, yeah, that first, that first initial print, uh, value is way off in left field, literally. And, uh, you know, this is a tremendous note. This one right here is sold for $799 and 95 cents. This is an extremely rare error. If you come across it, you know, where just one printing is way off. Um, usually we see the third print with the serial numbers, um, you know, way off in left field. And those are worth less because they're, they're more available out there. But yeah, something like this, you don't see them that often. When you do, you do have quite the gem on your hands. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to go ahead and do it for the PCMR for Wednesday, November 3rd. Man, we're in November, kicking it off. Hopefully you guys are taking advantage of the great numismatic market that's going on right now. Uh, I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound Coinaholics. We are discovering together. Hopefully this video gives you inspiration to go ahead and forge forward and find some treasure for yourself. That's it, guys. Have fun. I will see you on the next coin video. And that's all. So long.